Welcome to By The Numbers, I'm FM Tahiti and I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us for season five now with Belfast Celtic um, and it's the first season outside of the bottom tier. So we got promoted last season, which you hopefully remember as fondly as I do. Um, in this episode, we're just going to play our opening match which in the Blue Sport Championship or the Blue Fin Sport Championship. Uh, don't want to cheat the sponsors out of anything there. Um, against our rivals Donegal Celtic, who managed to get up the season beforehand. Um, should be interesting. I'm going to take through transfers and just play the one match to try and keep the episode's length down. It's around about the 16th of January. Um, so the public beta's come out, and I'm trying the public beta out. So things like one on ones, some crossing, um, they've all been tweaked. Uh, what else has been tweaked? What have they mentioned? Uh, defensive tracking for long balls, referee behavior, click at chance calculation has been recalculated. Penalty conversions, um, penalty kick conversions, I should say, have been uh, adjusted as well. So we'll see what this looks like. It's probably not the wisest things to do when we're going to be fighting relegation basically this season. Um, but I don't want to shy away from the public beta. If I can see what's going on with it and get used to it quicker, that's better for when a patch finally does come out. And also, it means if I spot anything, I've got the opportunity to kind of report it. Um, and I doubt it's going to be a step back from the last match engine. If it is, I can only just switch it off for a bit and hope for the best, but we shall see. So what's happened transfer-wise? Some painful stuff, um, to be honest. Let's look at the transfer history. So who left? We lost a couple of youth players. McLaughlin, Young, Watson, McDermott, all left. None of them have broken into the first team. The one that probably hit hardest was Watson because he was going to be cover for that left back position for us. So that was a bit of a bit of a pain. Uh, the big one was the one who left a week ago, or just over a week ago, is our keeper Craig Robinson. He's left to join Queen's University, who are also in the same league as us, I think. But potentially more money for him. Uh, more established club. But he's had a couple of seasons with us. It was good. He was definitely an improvement on our old keeper. But it's left us in the lurch a little bit. We've still not had time to really react to the fact he's gone. And we do have a new keeper in, but I bought him as backup, or brought him in as backup to Craig Robinson rather than a replacement. So look who we brought in. We've got Joe Curran in, who's really highly rated by our scouts, especially centre midfield, attacking midfield. Don't really need him, but he was rated so highly we thought it's worth bringing him in, especially if we end up losing somebody, which we tend to do. Uh, Scott Williamson to cover the left of defence. So Watson's gone, but at least Williamson will offer some cover there. Uh, Luke Mullerhand was rated like a 96 or something um, as a goalkeeper. Um, where was he beforehand? He was at Ards um, in the Championship as well. He's, he's been around, but not played much. But he's got a lot of potential, apparently. Uh, Adam uh, McMahon um, to be our sort of cover centre back. To be honest, I'm kind of regretting this one. Uh, Mark Skates, attacking midfielder, centre, and striker again. Highly rated, but doesn't look great. And then we brought back Graham McGreevy. So he left us. So remember, everyone who's turned to traitor once, we will give another opportunity to. We'll bring him back in because we're desperate. Um, if they turn traitor twice, then they're dead to us and we go in hard on them when we play against them. But he went off to Portadown, didn't play a single senior game for them. And then they released him. So he wasn't even there for a whole season, I don't think. Um, no, no, he wasn't. He wasn't even there for the whole season and we brought him back. So and obviously we're not paying him anywhere near as much. As he was getting ported down, I was paying a five or less than he was getting when he was with us. So there's a lesson there for Graham. Hopefully, he learns from it. So that's our kind of squad. Uh, in terms of finances, see our balance is 107,000, which is a huge look at this uptick here. And that's because I played a Belfast Money Cup uh, because we were getting into debts and because we've gone up into a new division. I created a cup competition against teams like Coventry, Blackpool and I can't remember who it was, Burnley maybe. Um, 
No, Preston. It's Preston. Um, and I filled the stadium a few times. So we've got a reasonable size stadium. Um, was it clubbing for for this level? We've got reasonable. So we basically sold this out um, several times over the course of that cup, and then got some TV money for it, which kind of boosted us up. Um, and I think there was a cash injection just before I did it. So that's kind of set us on a straight and narrow. I don't like doing those kind of cups um, that often, just because it feels like a little bit of a cheat if you just fill your entire preseason with those kind of matches. But I think occasionally teams do have money spinning tournaments. So that was our m modest money spinning tournament. Teams that were willing to come to us, and we made a bit of money out of them. All right, then let's play this match. So, as is tradition, let's clear this. Start with a fresh um, slate. Nice, easy keeping sort of selection. We've either got Luke Mullerhand or Brian Carroll. It's probably going to be Luke Mullerhand currently, but Brian Carroll's not that different to him. To me, they both look terrible. For a first choice keeper, like I, I'd be worried about them if we, were, we hadn't been promoted, basically. Let's get Tommy Ray on the right. On the left, it's got to be Chris Young. All playing defenders. Let's get Ben Mitchell in there and Evans. So the back line pretty much unchanged. Then we're going to have Keevan McCallion in his defensive midfielder. On right wing, we would have Robinson, but he suspended the open out of this season. Uh, we'll come back to that so you can put on the left. So on the left, we have Tony Martin. We have Trevor Garrett, Niall Gordon. Um, we can have Warwick, but we can also play Warwick on the right, so I'll probably go for Niall Gordon on the left. Let's stick Warwick on the right. Attack midfielder Cockroft goes in, which probably skates who we brought in is on loan, so we don't have to worry too much about playing him. Bonis is a little bit tired. We'll give him, we'll start him for the first half and have him with Shea Devlin and then Carroll on the bench, Clark for right back, Martin for left back and the centre of defence, Skates, I don't know, you can cover a lot of the pitch Kai, and Downey, that gives us no one up front. So the keeper comes off and we'll put Reese Hunter on there, that should, that should cover us, it doesn't give us much cover for the left or right hand side of the pitch but we'll just have to work with it. Donegal Celtic are rivals as well so this is an interesting introduction into the season. They just, I say just about, they were kind of around the bottom of the table but weren't in it in a kind of long-term relegation battle last season so they're establishing themselves. First time it's from the bloody blur. Let's go. Yeah, so they're kind of established. So this will be a tough match. Whatever. Soft free kick. So let's see what the new match engine looks like. I've played a Tahiti game, the new match engine, and this is the second game I'm playing with the new sort of public beta match engine. So I have no idea what this is going to be like. Like I said, if it's if it breaks our tactic then this is a poor time to do that, but I'm not going to hold back. Come on, Bonis. Good strike. Good save. I'm reasonably confident that we could scrape survival, but it's going to depend a lot on our defensive record. I don't doubt we can score goals, but I do doubt that we can keep clean sheets. Um especially with Mullahan being kind of untested. We came out confidently for that. I am going to look for someone else there. At least we finally got promotion. One title, one cup. Go on, Bonis. He tried to square it in. Yeah, one title, one cup. It might be a Steels and Sons cup, but it, it counts. 
They keep our relatively direct football in this league as well if we can do so and see if we can pick up anything extra. We are just one promotion away from being in the Premiership, which means one promotion away from being able to try and get European money, qualify for Europe. There is a big jump, I think, in quality from the Championship to the Premiership in Northern Ireland from looking at some of the teams. But we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Premiership teams in the past and not been too ashamed by them. But financially, we can't compete. We're still not able to offer any proper part-time contracts that are protected. Go on, Warwick. We are trying a few long balls and not quite getting through, but... Come bonus. Devlin. Uh... It's going to be difficult to tell how well we're doing. So how much is us being good or bad and how much is the match engine at this stage? But we're playing well against them. It's just not completely convincing. Go on, Keevan. Oh, come on. Good bonesty then. Devlin lays it off. Goes long again. Warwick, do something. Wow. Bit of a team shot. So I think at half time, Bonus is going to come off because he's getting tired. Devlin will shift over as the target man and then we'll bring Hunter on. What was that? Devlin's got what it takes to be a target man as well as Bonus. Save. Yeah, I've just released an article on Dictate the Game. Um, so by the time this episode comes out, it'll be about a week and a half old, but um, just on the role of the target man. Basically about how much I love target man role and how you can use it for different things. Partly inspired by what we've been doing at Belfast. So go, go give it a read if you like target men. You don't, then you're not going to like the way we play. Right, keep it up. Let's make our changes. So, Reese Hunter, Bonus. Switch these two. Reese Hunter's got some potential. I want to try and get Downey a bit more playtime this season as well, see how he develops, but like the plan really is to first and foremost just get points. You have to upset a few players to do that, then that's what we'll have to do. Tackle. We're playing away at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see what kind of gates we get. So we brought 323 away fans to this match, and this match is also in Belfast. It might be Donegal Celtic, but their, their Celtic Park Stadium is in Belfast. Um, part of the reason why they're rivals with us. So if we're bringing 323 away fans, I wonder what we're going to be bringing to our home games. Let's bring on Downey. And Clark Ray. Don't want to jinx it, but I would take a point initially. So I'll settle us in. One later score, I won't match that, so there we go. Come on. This should be the end of match highlight, I think. Nothing coming from this. Go long. So yeah, difficult to tell what the match engine is like. I've, I've not seen any major issues or anything from this one. Uh, but we've not had that many one-on-ones or anything like that from this one either. So just have to wait and see how it goes with the rest of the matches. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Keep them happy. That'll do the trick. So, first game, first point. Um, a lot of the teams are going to be better than us by quite a bit, but what are we expect to do, club vision. They want us to play high tempo pressing football still, so we've still got the same tactic. That's not changing. We want us to be within our wage budget, which we are. Spending 486, we've got 675 to spend. We want us to fight against, or fight bravely against relegation, so basically you might get relegated, but don't get relegated before Christmas. Competitive in Irish Cup, McLean Cup, and Antrim Shield. And then third round and second round of Steel and Sons and Intermediate Cup, respectively. Um, it's weird because they didn't used to care about the Steels and Sons Cup. I know they do. Only a little bit, but more than they used to. So all of this is doable. I don't think we're going to be under much pressure uh, when it comes to the um, board and performances, so long as we're not completely capitulating. And we are favoured personnel as well. Ronnie Hot Dogs has made it onto that board. We're behind Lee Bonis, who's an icon. Have they got low standards to make him an icon? I need 25 league goals. About 36 goals in total. They are, I'm going to argue that they're easily pleased if that's all it takes to be an icon. Um, I'm not saying he's not a good player, but I don't I see why they like him more than me. But there we go, we'll end there before I start bitterly rambling about my players getting more recognition than me. Um, and we'll come back in a few matches time for another league game. Um, probably ignore the cup games unless we get to a reasonably good point or unless we're trying something new out in the uh, cup games. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to try and keep a record of our XG across these matches and basically the same analysis I did last um, season. Uh, with this new engine Let's see what it's like but yeah thanks very much for watching please subscribe if you've not already please like please check out the tahiti videos if you're interested in something a bit more kind of fictional than this um and have a read of some of the stuff on dictate the game as well see you later